Good morning, everybody. Thanks for showing up. I know it's really hard to wake up so early on day two of any conference, especially after you have that party last night. Amp block was a good time. Um, I'm Steve, and this talk is called The Return of Shoes. Uh, it's about shoes, which is the best Ruby GUI toolkit in existence. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Shoes was originally started by Why the Lucky Stiff. Uh, and then uh, whenever he disappeared, I ended up uh, taking over the project. Um, I actually took over Hackity Hack uh, first, and by virtue of Hackity Hack being the largest shoes application, ended up working on shoes as well, because it's just natural that you know my biggest dependency I, I would get involved with too. And now I'm maintaining both projects. So uh, yeah, this is a this is a story about um, those past two years. Uh, a little bit about shoes itself, if you're not familiar with it and uh, some talk about where I'm taking the project in the future and how you can get involved and, uh, and help, because Shoes is awesome. So yeah, whenever Y disappeared, um, I, uh, I, th I thought to myself, well, I'm not really ready to take on an open source project and help anybody out, um, or, or, or I would need to help someone out rather than take one over. So whoever's gonna take over Hackity Hack, I would love to help them, because I think that that's Y's crown jewel and a very important project, even, even not uh, because of his celebrity, but just because I feel very, uh, I feel that the, the social idea of teaching people how to program, and especially kids, is really important. And so, um, so I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll help whoever, whoever steps up and takes that on. And then somebody's like, I'll take over shoes, I'll take over HPercot, you know, I'll, I'll work on this. And, uh, and you know, a day or two went by and nobody stood up for Hackity. And it became very clear that if nobody else, if I did not, nobody else was going to, and the project would die. And so, um, so I decided to bite the bullet and uh, and give it a shot. And um, you know, so there it was, me and Hackity Hack. And um, as as I started working on it, you know, and finding bugs and things, um, I ended up getting involved with Shoes too. And I came to realize that uh, Shoes is really, really awesome. <laughs> uh, the most of the time when you're programming uh, with GUI stuff. I mean, so as much as we complain about HTML and CSS uh, and how bad it is sometimes to actually build things, doing desktop applications is far worse. I would much rather uh, deal with all of the finicky CSS stuff and deal with IE6 issues than uh, use GTK or Qt or something like that to build, build an app because it's, it's horrendous. Uh, and it's not really those projects' fault that they suck. Uh, it's due to the, their history uh, and the fact that they were originally written for C um, means that oftentimes you get interfaces that are just C ported to a language like Ruby. So it's not like actually programming in Ruby, you're programming in C in Ruby. So uh, Shoes, uh, and what makes it so magical specifically, is the fact that Shoes fully embraces Ruby uh, and uses its primitives and ideas to, to build GUI stuff. So uh, it makes really heavy, heavy use of blocks, for example, to power everything. Um, and uh, this means that it's, it's the only time I've ever built desktop applications that I didn't immediately uh, want to go cry afterwards uh, because it's actually enjoyable. So the first, the first part of this talk, uh, I'm gonna give you a demo and share with you uh, why I uh, love shoes so much. Uh, this particular section is, is based on um, part of a book that Y wrote called Nobody Knows Shoes. And uh, so it's called The 10 Gifts of Shoes and it overviews the, uh, the 10 biggest features or the 10 biggest parts of shoes. So uh, all of this art is things that I stole directly from Y because the, it's great art. So that's where, that's where that comes from. Um, yeah, nobody knows shoes is the book and uh, afterwards you will. So uh, here, here are the 10 gifts uh, that shoes gives us. Uh, paragraphs, stacks and flows, which do layouts, uh, buttons, images, edit lines, which is your input text, uh, links and URLs, which are kind of cool, uh, the backgrounds, and uh, clear and other manipulation stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll go over these real quick. So um, paras let you put paragraphs of text on the screen. Pretty simple. Uh, you can add some strings, you can, you know, multi-line strings and it, and it all works out, but uh, it's the most basic thing you can do, right? Display some text on the screen. Also, if you'll notice uh, in this code example, the, uh, the entire application is actually in a block of itself. So shoes app do, and everything that goes in the middle is what shows up in your window. Um, very basic, straightforward. Uh, stacks. So uh, stacks are one of the two layout mechanisms that shoes has. Uh, they're basically a stack, uh, if you put uh, elements into a stack, 
they'll just go from top to bottom um, on the page. So it's like stacking things on top of each other. And you can combine those stacks with flows that let you do uh, things that go left to right. So put things in a flow and they go that way. With just these two simple primitives, you can end up uh, making much larger uh, interfaces by combining them together. So you know, if you put three stacks into a flow, you'll have a three column layout and it'll grow to size all of the stuff that you put in it. Um, and you can set heights and widths and I'll do all those kinds of things, but that's it as far as layout goes. Um, when, I, when I was in uh, getting my CS degree and we were doing all that Java interface stuff, I never could quite get my head around all the different like layouts and settings and you know, you can combine them in weird sort of ways. So, so she keeps it really nice and simple um, and just lets you put those two things together and it's really surprising how versatile it actually is um, and the things that you can build out of simple, simple stuff. Um, so buttons, um, buttons are awesome and, and they're awesome because they, they demonstrate uh, just how great blocks are basically. So to make a button in shoes, you call button with, uh, and this is kind of tiny text, but you, uh, you button with a string and the string is the text of the button and the block that you pass to it is the code that gets executed whenever you click on the button. Couldn't be more straightforward. Uh, and this is a great example of callbacks and how you can use blocks uh, as callbacks in general. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great illustration of one of the best features of Ruby. Um, these are images. Uh, you, can't, you can't really super see this really well, but up in the upper right hand corner, there's just uh, at the bottom of that picture is image guy.ping with a top and a left added to it. So uh, you can include images that are on your hard drive. You can include images that are in your application itself. You can actually even include URLs of images and the first time your shoes app runs, it will download that image and cache it locally. So um, that's kind of cool. Uh, and it, uh, you know, you can use height and width to change the sizes of it and put them wherever you want and do all that kind of positioning, but it's really super simple. Uh, no messing with, you know, uh, loading a JPEG versus loading a ping or using different libraries. You just say, hey shoes, I'd like an image and it, uh, and it puts it up there. Um, edit lines, the most simple of input, uh, you know, things possible. So uh, you can type stuff in um, by giving it and give it a width and uh, just get the text out. Very straightforward. And uh, this is also, this particular piece of code shows a lot of the, the patterns that happen when you're writing shoes apps. So you sort of set an instance variable inside the block to be equal to the edit line. And then later you can ask that, edit that instance variable for its text. So as you're sort of setting up these interface uh, items, you can ref this is how you name them or, or refer to them later is by, uh, by setting them equal to an instance variable and actually return objects, uh, which is kind of cool. And then, uh, so links, there's actually two different kinds of links in shoes. So you can put something like a click uh, handler uh, on something and that'll actually go to a web URL and it'll bring it up in a browser. So that's uh, the first kind of, of link. But there are also uh, URLs which have links which I'll explain in a minute, but those are two separate things. So uh, backgrounds. Um, backgrounds are, seem like a kind of a minor feature uh, but they really made me appreciate all of the stuff that Shoes actually does for you compared to other toolkits. So you can give backgrounds by using a color, a gradient, or an image to set the background for your Shoes app. So um, a color, there are, I don't know, a dozen or two named colors that have fun names like Periwinkle or Red. Um, but you can also do RGB values directly. Uh, and so we sort of have these predefined colors that exist. Um, you can also do gradients uh, if you pass in some hex colors uh, and make them into, um, you know, uh, use the dot 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 operator to uh, create the, the gradient, right? It just makes sense. Um, the, this is an example of things that are super easy to do to sh in shoes that are really hard to do elsewhere. So I was building an application with Qt one time and I wanted to use a gradient for my background and the, the line of code to implement this gradient would be background and then those two, those two colors. Um, it took 26 lines of code uh, in Qt to make a background because you have to create the background object, you have to create the two colors, you have to create a gradient object, you have to set how far does the gradient go and it, at what rate does it move from one color to another and all these crazy options to make it work and, uh, and Shoes is just a couple simple characters. So um, this, is, this is why Shoes is simultaneously very simple but yet really powerful uh, because the defaults uh, and the, it's very simple to do simple things and it lets you do some, some more complicated stuff. Um, 
with the gradients, you couldn't exactly get down to that level of specificity, but uh, I haven't found it to be a problem to have a third of a gradient at the top of a window and the rest of the gradient at the bottom yet. So, you know. And then uh, the second sort of link things are URLs. Um, this is actually a, a feature of shoes that is not well defined quite yet, and there's very little documentation about it, but um, you can actually build applications by sort of uh, defining screens, if you will, and then creating links between them and treating it sort of like a web page. So in this case, uh, this is a book list and there are three different pages. So at the root URL, uh, you call the index method and that'll display on the screen. If you hit twain, it'll call twain. And there's no actual browser bar, this is all just internal, um, but it lets you do the uh, links. So if you can see in the index, there's a click going to slash twain and that's how you'd navigate between. Um, this sort of, sort of betrays a little bit of Shoes' heritage. Uh, this, this sort of Ruby incarnation of Shoes is actually the second or third. Uh, long, long ago, uh, it was actually about putting Ruby directly onto uh, an instance of, I think it was Gecko, um, way, way back before I got involved with the project. So it still has this very webby feel to it in a lot of ways. Um, if you know, stacks and flows are very similar to you know, using divs to lay things out. But, um, but this lets you build like multi-page or multi-screen applications uh, relatively easily. And then you can also um, just use a shoes.app or a window block multiple times if you want to have multiple windows and shoes. But um, this is one of those things that's really unique and interesting uh, and it's like a different way to build apps. So when coming from other toolkits, there's a little, a little bit of learning, but uh, you know, it's not too bad. And then finally, uh, clear and its derivatives. So uh, you can call, um, like the clear method onto some sort of container object or something like a text area and it'll clear out all the information. But uh, if you wanna change something, you can actually pass it a block and it'll clear stuff out and then fill it in with whatever other elements you put in there. So uh, there's also like after and before that let you sort of manipulate it almost in a DOM-ish kind of way. Again, like sort of pseudo webby, but not where you can uh, take these elements and manipulate them um, like that. So, uh, so that's it, that's the, the 10 gifts of shoes. Here's an example uh, application that I whipped up in about 15 minutes. Um, this, uh, my friend Zach created a project called Shoes Contrib, and it uh, has a, a 30 or 40 sample shoes applications you can play around with and use for examples. And so um, I got really sick of opening them all up manually myself to play around with them. And since Shoes lets you run multiple apps at the same time, uh, I built this little browser. So this, uh, you can actually load this up and it will automatically read all the samples and let you uh, use two drop-down boxes to try running them. So uh, you can see I have a stack with a flow, so um, it'll do everything top to bottom and then left to right within it. And uh, you can pick a category from a list box, so I have all of the named items, and uh, it's a little long, so it sort of wraps around the screen, but you know, uh, that's how you would do like a drop-down list. And then um, I have a hidden flow that has choose an example with an empty list box in it. Then when the, the category box changes, it uh, sets the examples hidden to false, so it shows it, and it lists them with all of the Ruby files that are in that particular box's named folder. So, uh, you know, really super simple callbacks, uh, inter elements interacting with other elements through this instance variables and, and block style. And then finally, whenever the example box changes, it, uh, it does something that's really terrible, but that's okay. Uh, it evals the string of text in that RB file uh, in the current binding. So just run whatever code is in that application, uh, which I would never suggest for production, but in this particular case, when I'm just showcasing demo applications, I'm not gonna put a rm-rf demo application in there, so I felt it was, it was okay to, uh, to, to do that. But, um, so yeah, so this really simple basic app, it's like 15 minutes to whip it up. And, uh, and it's really enjoyable overall to code in. So uh, that's why, why I love shoes. And uh, nobody knows shoes, but, but now you do. So that's the uh, little bit of a demo. I wanna show you uh, an actual shoes app running. And this is, demos are always a terrible idea. So uh, this will probably fail miserably, but um, you know. So uh, this, is, this is my favorite uh, little shoes demo app. Um, why uh, was demoing Hackity Hack at uh, a conference called Art and Code uh, a couple years ago, right before you disappeared? And uh, so this is a, this is a, a duel. So uh, you can see I have this open in TextMate. We have a, a window with a black background and some swords um, that are in a stack. They're just paragraphs. And it's sort of hard to tell with all these lines what's going on, but you'll see in a second. So, um, 
we have this waists and these legs, and there's this animate block. So one of the other features that I didn't talk about um, before, you can actually run animations and uh, processing, and shoes sort of have a lot of cross collaboration, or a lot of the people that were active in shoes really early on kind of went to processing uh, at some point. And so um, you can do these great animations. So this is taking this insult variable and replacing its text with stuff from these array of insults, uh, and then moving, moving these legs and swords and stuff. So I'm, uh, I'm actually gonna start shoes up, and uh, it gives you this little menu when you don't, um, you can package an application into a standalone uh, app, um, but you can also open other apps. So oftentimes when I'm developing, I just open apps from uh, shoes. And so whenever you're, uh, you know, you got two dudes that are sword fighting and yelling insults at each other, running back and forth, um, this little animation, so. Uh, it's always really appealed to me. I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool. So yeah, so you got this animation and like a little window. You also notice that uh, this is a it's got real like the Chrome is actual Mac Chrome. So we do uh, native widgets on Mac, Windows, and Linux. So the the standard problem with cross-platform GUI toolkits is that they tend to have their own image, right? So if you've ever used a Swing application, you know you're using a Swing application. And that approach is, is okay, but not ideal. And so, uh, so we actually use, we bind to Coco directly to the Windows uh, API, and we use GTK on Linux. So uh, only if you're using Qt do you sort of feel weird about it. But um, that way you have actual real widgets and it feels much more native um, than something like Swing would be. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is a little, little app. And while uh, Shoes sort of has a reputation for being good for tiny apps or it's good for like smaller things, um, but you can actually build larger applications in Shoes. Um, shoes actually came from Hackity Hack, uh, like I mentioned earlier. So um, I'm gonna show you that real quick as well, just give you an idea of like a much larger Shoes app. So, uh, you know, Hackity Hack is a couple thousand lines of code um, and uh, it lets you uh, learn Ruby, or learn programming via Ruby. So this is all uh, written Shoes, but I have some tabs, it's some sample Shoes apps uh, that you can look at. So there's actually really cool like um, animations, this is actually one stolen from processing, but it lets you just run them and uh, you know, check out all these little, these little fun things. But, um, so we have this like code editor, and it's got line numbers, and you can like syntax highlighting stuff. Um, when you type in do, it'll highlight things and uh, let you move around. And you can just click save and, uh, and save your program and run it. So you know, super integrated mini IDE. Uh, you can actually learn Ruby via these lessons. So uh, you it actually folds out these little, these little side panels and you're able to, uh, to go through and learn programming. It tells you how to start typing stuff. We actually implemented Logo as a DSL in Ruby and put it into Hackity Hack. So you actually start off by learning Logo in Ruby to learn programming, which is kind of slightly meta, but uh, you know, good. So, uh, so I'm a big fan of that. And then there's also, um, so you, you have your list of programs and you can actually um, go to the uh, website and sign up and get an account and then back up your programs to the cloud um, on the website and share them with other people and help each other out. So um, I was so excited. I didn't explicitly build like forking functionality into the website. It's sort of like a, almost like a mini GitHub, right? Because GitHub influences all of our lives as developers. So with the Hack Hack project, I wanted to have something similar. And uh, organically, uh, these two like 15 year old kids were building a little, uh, a little application and one of them had a problem and the other one said, hey, I copied your program and I tried it out and I fixed a bug and like check out my version. And I went, yes, you know, all, all of the work that I've been doing has meaning. Um, so, you know, it's great. I've had people uh, email me and say, hey, I went through this with my seven year old son and now he's like playing around and making little games and messing with things. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's real good. But, Anyway, this is an example just like of a larger shoes app and how it can sort of scale up to you know semi-real uh, applications. And also, uh, I distribute an actual copy of Pong with uh, with Hackity Hack as well, which is kind of cool. So you get you can actually play uh, by just moving the mouse. And uh, it, the AI isn't particularly great, but you know, whatever. So that's an example of uh, yeah, computer wins. Uh, you can build whole games in shoes via a shoes app, and you know all that meta stuff, so. Awesome, code demo, everything didn't break. It never fails, such a bad idea. Um, so Shoes is awesome, right? Uh, I love Shoes, but uh, there are some things about it that, uh, that aren't. So we'll talk about what's awesome about Shoes and what's not awesome about Shoes. So first of all, uh, most importantly, yeah, GUI toolkit, 
isn't actually a pain to use. The only one I've ever found that's like this. Um, the, the best thing about shoes, though, the more I've come to work with it, uh, is to appreciate that the, the value of shoes or what's great about shoes is its interface and not its implementation. So um, this manifests itself in a bunch of different ways, but uh, the largest is just the, that. The, the joy that comes out of using shoes is because it is a great way to build GUIs, but the, the actual details of how that, how that works is, uh, the, first of all, the implementation of shoes is a little bit of a problem, but also there's no reason there can't be multiple flavors of shoes. So um, a while back, uh, we decided to actually explicitly do this, and one of the core team members created Green Shoes, which is a, uh, a shoes that's about 90% compatible with the classic, or what we're calling red shoes, but it uses uh, the native Ruby GTK bindings to build, uh, using the same interface, you can run your code um, via that. And so uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, experiment. Recently released 1.0 um, on Y-Day, uh, and um, so it's sort of like a different back end to the same front end. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, help out or add a feature and you're more comfortable with using Ruby than using C, because uh, Shoes is implemented in C, and I'll get to that in a minute, uh, you could use the Green Shoes project and add it there, right? And interesting ideas uh, that have been prototyped in Green Shoes get eventually moved into Red, and it's all sort of a little, you know, ecosystem. So, uh, so we want e people to be able to build their own custom shoes, and this, of course, means that this leads into uh, a shoes spec project, which we're codenaming White Shoes, that uh, eventually we'll be able to, just like Ruby has Ruby spec, and you can impl uh, unit test different implementations to see how conformant they are. We want to have uh, unit tests for shoes apps, or shoes implementations, to see uh, how conformant they are, eventually, down the road. Um, but these are the two major forks. Um, there are a couple other ones that have sort of started up and fizzed out a little bit, but Green Shoes is going strong and is a really awesome project. Um, being cross-platform cross is also one of the great things about shoes, right? So uh, as developers, we want to do things that minimize our time actually developing uh, the, the junk, and we want to be implementing interesting logic, right? So uh, write once, run anywhere is, is awesome, and you actually get to do that uh, with shoes. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but, like I said, there's some things that are just not awesome about shoes, and I would be lying to you if I told you that everything was super happy uh, and great. So uh, this is currently what the problems are um, with shoes. So uh, for the last two years of working on shoes in Hackity, there's, there's a reason that I had to take over the shoes project, and that's that the people who were working on shoes basically stopped working on shoes. So uh, I've pretty much been by myself on both projects for the last two years. Uh, and that can be pretty demoralizing at times. Um, it's really difficult whenever you spend uh, hours fixing something and you're not even sure if anybody uses it. I'm really driven by motivation of people actually using the software that I write, and so uh, you know, it's, uh, that's what's been great about Hackity, um, specifically, is that a lot of people use it, and so my work through shoes comes forward in Hackity, but um, it's been very hard to, uh, to keep going whenever you're sort of by yourself. Um, and uh, the other problem is platform stuff. So uh, the by yourself thing manifests itself in other ways more than just me wearing black clothing and crying in a corner or whatever. Um, so when you're by yourself and uh, you're supporting uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, you're like, okay, cool, cross, cross platform, whatever. But three platforms is not actually three platforms, right? So if we're talking about Linux, I need to support Ubuntu, uh, of course. But there's also Fedora and Arch Linux. Um, if I'm talking about Windows, there's Windows XP and Windows Vista and Windows 7. If you're talking about the Mac, then you have Mac OS Leopard and you have Snow Leopard and you have Lion now. So uh, you know, supporting three platforms is actually more like supporting eight or 10 uh, or 12 platforms. And uh, whenever the original creator of the project is no longer with you and he used old APIs to implement large swatches of functionality and then this guy, Somebody who I, I uh, like a lot decides to like remove entire chunks of you know the Mac OS in his newest releases. It creates problems, and there's a lot of work. Uh, bit rot is a very real thing when you're working with desktop software, any software for you know at all, but especially desktop software. Um, and so, currently, actually, uh, the shoes works with Lion, but only if you build one yourself. So if you go to the website and download it right now, it will crash 
uh, and we're, I'll get back to that in a little bit later, but um, bit rot is one of those things that actually does um, happen and is very hard as a single developer to be an expert on 12 different versions of operating systems and all their little kinks and you know fiddly bits. So, um, so I'm late tired <laughs> from dealing with all of these issues. Uh, it's also really hard because you know every change I make, I don't want to break things. So if I want to implement a new feature, I have to test it on all of those operating systems. And uh, this is one of the things that I love about open source is that working on my projects lets me work on other people's projects. So if you haven't heard about Travis yet, you should go to that URL right now um, because it's awesome. So Travis CI is continuous integration for the open source community in general. It started off um, for Ruby, but it's actually moved to be for um, Erlang and Closure and a couple other languages too, um, Node.js, and uh, Python and PHP are coming soon. But um, basically, this lets you just uh, go to their website, click sign in with GitHub, it shows you all your repositories, and uh, you say, oh yes, I would love for this one to be continuously integrated. <coughs> and then every time you push to GitHub, it runs, excuse me, <coughs> it runs all your tests. Do we have a drink I can borrow real quick? Is there water around somewhere? I ran out of water. Anyway, yeah, Travis is awesome. So, um, because of, whew, at the moment it only supports Linux, but uh, this is a great way for me to contribute to the project. I'm helping them with Mac and Windows workers so that we're able to actually test <coughs> applications on multiple platforms. And so that'll be a great way to be able to test all these things and uh, make sure that I'm not breaking stuff. Um, because of all this too, it means that we've had historically had uh, very infrequent releases. So um, we released the first uh, like Shoes 3 a year after Y disappeared. And uh, we uh, haven't released since then. So te technically there hasn't been a new Shoes release since uh, August of 2010, which is a long time ago. Uh, you know, We talk about continuous deployment and wanting to push stuff to your customers all the time but it's been very difficult to um, get releases out there. So uh, you know that's another thing that sort of manifests itself with all these other issues is that if you spend all your time fixing platform specific bugs, then uh, it's hard to release often. Uh, also, Shoes is written in C. Uh, I think this is really awesome, but uh, there's other people that don't think this is really awesome. It's very hard to, uh, convince Rubyists that they should take the time to learn an entirely new low-level language and deal with memory and pointers and uh, all those kinds of things. So um, for me, it's a great excuse to get into all that stuff because I really love programming in C, but there's a lot of people that don't. So um, yeah, so I think it's awesome. They don't think it's awesome. Uh, so this is actually uh, why a lot of the uh, shoes uh, people that signed up after Y left left is because they looked at the code base and said, nah, I don't really want to work on that. Um, also, uh, somebody posted this in their blog, uh, a letter from Y, and uh, Y was saying that he likes to experiment and not write tests, and so maybe we shouldn't write tests too, because Y didn't do it and Y was awesome. And uh, so I posted this, which is very, very, very true. As someone who maintains Y's code, please write some tests for your application. Um, <coughs> it's incredibly difficult, again, like 12 different operating systems, all written in C, uh, Y's C code is not very good, to just straight up say it. And uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, not checking to see if things are null before you dereference them kind of errors that will just you know, lead to problems down the road. Uh, and so um, you know, having unit tests would be awesome. I have zero. And uh, there's, there's a file called ruby.c in shoes, for example, that says, uh, the comment at the top says, just a few bits of Ruby that I've become accustomed to, smiley face. It is like 3,000 lines of uncommented C code. Um, so, so unit tests would be great. 
uh, and you should write them for your applications so that you're not paying someone else's technical debt off someday in the future. Um, it's totally worth it, but you know. Uh, Shoes is intimately uh, tied to MRI at the moment. And uh, what that means is that 192, it's not happening. Uh, one of the reasons why we released Shoes so infrequently is because we currently were tied to Ruby 191. And Ruby 191 is a terrible abomination that never should have been foisted upon the world. But I didn't know that right before it came out. So we moved to 191, and uh, you know, it's what happens. So we're still working through a couple little 192 issues, but it's really difficult. Um, I also want to move to Rubinius at some point as well. Uh, that'll probably end up happening. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, I definitely want to get it working with it, but because uh, Rubinius is a great project. Um, so yeah. So nobody knows shoes is sort of the past, and so what's going on with uh, you know the future? Will anybody know shoes, or what's the what's the project like? We're sort of at this weird tipping point right now, which is really awesome, uh, and it's an exciting time um, specifically, but. There's definitely a very clear separation, I feel, between this moment that's happening um, and the past and the future. Like, it's all going to be different uh, going forward than it was in the past. This is very hard for me to, to um, sort of work through. One of the reasons why it took me two years to really get going on these projects is, you know, when you pick up someone else's uh, work of art that is very obviously cr uh, closely personal to them and they, like, threw it in the garbage can and you sort of picked it up, you, you don't want to, like, ruin what they originally were intending, uh, but you also like have different goals than the original creator. So like, I uh, think that there's a lot of beauty in maintaining software uh, and having lots of tests and being able to change things easily. And so m it's not that Y was bad, it's that his goals were different than my goals. And so now I have to turn his code into the code that I want to see. Um, and so it took me a long time to become okay with uh, removing thousands of lines of code that Y wrote from a project. You know, it's very, it's very difficult. Um, also, there's this sort of effect, which uh, is something that's uh, slightly important. I want to say a couple words about celebrity in the programming community. Uh, I heard this at Lone Star RubyConf. Uh, I can die happy when I go to a Ruby conference and I don't hear anyone say Zed Shaw or Y. Um, and uh, for the record, this conference actually has been zero until me just now. Uh, so good job. Um, at that conference, uh, the, the best part was at that conference, I got to put up a slide that said Y, three, Z, five, uh, during talks at that conference. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is sort of the, uh, I'm giving a talk and mentioning Y because, you know, I sort of feel like I want to say a couple things uh, about him and about what I'm doing with his work, but um, I am slowly, uh, systematically removing Y from the project. and. It's not, uh, it's not because I don't like Y, because uh, Y was awesome, right? Like that's the reason that I'm devoting most of my life to continuing his work. But he did want to leave and be left alone, and so I feel that it's only respectful not to uh, keep, keep talking about someone forever, right? Like you, you break up with a girl and you don't keep her pictures around your apartment, you know, for the rest of all time. Uh, it's part of the like moving on process is that, uh, you know, we need to remember Y for sure, and that's one of the reasons why uh, you know, why day is awesome. So I wrote this blog post called We Forget That Open Source is Made Out of People. And, um, you know, we do invest a lot uh, of ourselves into the projects that we write. So like I said, I wasn't comfortable with changing Y's code for a long time because, you know, Y's code is what we have left of Y. And he invested a lot of himself into it. And we sort of have this, like, meritocracy uh, idea that I don't think is actually true. So we'd like to say that all the software we write and we put on GitHub is totally impersonal and it's all about whether it works or whether it doesn't work. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just about code, right? Like it's, you know, when I tell you that that code that you wrote is terrible, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. So it's about the code. I'm not saying anything about you, but it's terrible. Um, and, and this happens, right? Like I do this to other people sometimes and, and other people have done it to me and we, we sort of ignore this human element that I think is really important. So, um, we need to all remember that we are people and that we invest ourselves into the work that we do. And it's really easy to, uh, to take things personally when you criticize. So uh, we should be remembering things in a good way. So Y Day, for example, awesome. I want to keep doing Y Day in the future and, and continue to like remember Y on Y Day. But I don't think it's healthy to keep talking about him every other day of the year. So um, and yeah, so that's the big, the big emphasis. We're all people. Uh, this manifests itself also in the celebrity effect that we were talking about before. So, um, you know, people talk about Z and Y because they're, they're famous and cool and did cool stuff, but there are tons of people that are doing really cool stuff that aren't name brand people, and I think they deserve the same amount of, uh, of recognition. So, 
um, you know, I, uh, I would like to see that sort of flatten out. And yeah, even PHP developers, they're people too. So we're all in this together as, as, uh, as software programmers. So, uh, you know, we should remember this. And, and deriding other people's languages, while it's fun to do and, you know, uh, all that stuff, it's, it's not a healthy way to move forward as a community. So uh, I want to see everything be happy. So one of the reasons why I love following Tenderlove on Twitter is because of his Friday mornings, like, let's have a hug, guys, right? He takes a picture of himself with his, with his arms outstretched or, you know, say, you know, doing silly things. And it's, uh, it's, very, uh, it's very positive and uh, upbringing. So I want to see a lot more of this uh, in general out of us and out of our, uh, you know, community and what we're doing with projects. Um, this is also why I love contributing to Travis, because Sven and Josh uh, genuinely are incredibly happy anytime you help them with anything. Uh, yeah. There are IRC is one of the best rooms to be in, just because they, uh, they love doing this and they uh, enjoy that people want to help them. So that sort of positive energy is very uh, infectious and it creates a really great environment to, uh, to work in. Um, GitHub adding emoji to like pull requests and stuff and like comments is like great because you can like put all these silly things in there and you know make it much more lighthearted and happy. So uh, I really like having that. And so um, so as I'm moving forward, these are the kinds I'm thinking about, right? Like what community do we want to create as software developers? Um, as someone who's running a project and as someone who's running a project that basically is minting new developers, right? Like I'm I'm having metaphorical babies. What kind of world do I want them to grow up in? And so, you know, when I make new programmers, I want them to, to be taking part in something that I would be, that would be proud of. So um, as far as the actual technical details of what's going on with Future, um, Choose 3.1 Beta, uh, I'd like to sort of semi-announce that uh, today. So uh, we, some of the stuff that I've told you is slightly outdated as of right this second. So um, Choose 3.1 is mostly about moving to Ruby 192. And so if you build Choose Head today, uh, with Windows and, or with Mac and Linux, you'll get a working shoes based on Ruby 192 with a couple other bug fixes and stuff. If you build on Windows, it will compile but not quite run. And this is largely due to the fact that we all are not very experienced with Windows and we redid uh, the build process entirely to make it better. But something is still a little bit broken. So I was furiously working the last couple days to try to get it working right before uh, this happened so I could just be like, it's out, but not quite. So, uh, so it's a beta instead of a release candidate. So, uh, if you would like to help, you can check it out on the shoes wiki. Um, and there's links and stuff. So, uh, we would love to have some additional uh, help testing this newest release of shoes. If there are other bugs, I mean, you know, the Mac and Lin Linux versions too uh, actually are working. But we would love your bug reports, feedback, comments. You know, we're always trying to make shoes better in general. And as part of that, like, not having celebrity happen. Um, I, uh, while I'm the one up here announcing Shoes 3.1, uh, it's not really due to my work in a large uh, part of it. So specifically, uh, Was Not Rice and Chuck Reams are two guys who have put a lot of time and effort in in the last month. So uh, like I said, just that little bit of help from someone can sort of take a project that's stagnant and make it you know, uh, explode. So these two guys sort of jumped in the IRC and said, hey, I'd like to help, what can I do? And um, so in the last like six weeks, there's been more activity in shoes development than in the last two years. And it's solely because one or two people decided to actually uh, help in, help and get stuff done. So uh, Eric rewrote the Mac uh, build process entirely and Chuck rewrote the Windows build process entirely themselves, which is no small feat, again, with C compilation, compiling Ruby, uh, 10 to 15 dependencies of like various, you know, C stuff that we use is not a non-trivial thing. And so, you know, I, uh, they're awesome. Uh, all these other people, Toby, uh, Finzi, Dominic, uh, Corey, Dan, and Matthias, they've all been doing a lot of great work on shoes and Hackity specifically lately. Um, you know, uh, Dom is helping me rewrite the website uh, for Hackity Hack. Uh, Matthias is doing the same thing with the, the GitHub style or the like code sharing style stuff on the Hackity website. Corey and Dan contributed great stuff to the Hackity you know, application themselves, working with the new site and doing those kinds of things. And Finzi and Tobe have been working on you know, various things around shoes. So uh, all of these people uh, have been helping me out a lot and I really, really appreciate it. And they've completely changed my perspective um, on a project that was you know, difficult to work on, like I said, you know, when you're doing something by yourself for a long time. And so um, I owe them a great deal uh, for that. So um, yeah. If you want to help out with shoes, we would love to have you. Even just advice or like, I went to your website and it sucks because of X would be awesome. 
So uh, you can hit the, the shoes wiki. Uh, shoes at liberalist.com is our mailing list. We have pound shoes on Freenode uh, as well. And uh, if you want to get in touch, also there's the at shoes RB Twitter account because uh, all the good variations of shoes were taken and Twitter doesn't give up names that no one uses anymore. So three O's in shoes RB. And if you don't feel comfortable posting the mailing list, you could actually uh, email me directly. And uh, you know, I, I would love any feedback or thoughts or whatever. So uh, you, know, you can send me an email. So uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, as always, you can reach me at all these different places with my Twitter and uh, our status uh, on the web. The website's for shoes and uh, hackity hack. That should be 1-0 and shoesrb.com. I type with my own slide. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm also on speaker rate. Uh, all the talks that you go to, you should go to speaker rate and rate the people that talk because it's the only way we can get feedback about our talks. So really appreciate it. And uh, I'm writing a book about rest. So uh, get some re.st is about uh, real rest and why Rails is not actually rest. So uh, if that means anything to you or doesn't, you should check it out. Uh, and I run training classes now with Jeff at Jumpstart Labs. So uh, you know that's other things that are going on with me sort of unrelated to shoes. Uh, so yeah, thanks. Uh, I don't know what my time is at all. I think I have some time for a couple questions at least, right? When's the next person started? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yes. What's up? So maintenance programming is entirely different than greenfield development. You know this more, more than like anybody does. So I will be moving to 193 as soon as humanly possible once it's out, but it's the same sort of deal, right? Like the difference between 191 and 192 is bigger than 192 and 193 in a lot of ways. So uh, as soon as 193 final actually comes out, I'm gonna start like doing that and moving and it should be a relatively easy transition because the biggest thing is like threading, right? So. Uh, one on one actually causes a lot of crashes on Windows, um, and this affects a lot of, uh, of hackity hack uh, users because GUI stuff uses heavy threading, and one on one's threading was the worst part about a terrible release of Ruby. So, um, yeah, so we'll see. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, so there is a bunch of C unit testing frameworks, but as I'm sure you know, if you don't write your code to be testable, it's often really hard to get your code under test. So um, every one of you should go out and buy Working Effectively with Legacy Code by Michael Feathers uh, right this second. Um, that is another book that changed my life. Uh, Jim you know, Wyrick gave a talk where he talked about the books that changed his programming life. And uh, Working Effectively with Legacy Code uh, changed my uh, perspective. He defines legacy code as testable code. And so it's a, basically a bunch of strategies for getting completely untestable code under test. So um, yeah, so looking into it and the, that sort of stuff. So thanks, and yeah, come find me uh, if you have more questions.